Sir, we're back, and a few days ago, we dropped our top 10 point guards list to end the 2022 NBA season. So y'all know what time it is. Naturally, it is time to drop this shooting guard video. Like I told y'all before, we will be going through every single position, including the sixth man. And for the shooting guard position, as weird as it is, there are a couple of players that I feel like they dominate, I don't want to say dominate the list, but they kind of take over the list, even though they're not really a shooting guard per se. We got guys like Paul George and maybe even Mikel Bridges that are really true forwards, but they're playing shooting guard for their respective team. If you haven't done so already, go watch my top 10 point guards list, then come back to this video so that you can watch them in order. Of course, like, comment, and subscribe if you're new, and let's get right into it. At number 10, I got Anthony Simons. This is a guy that I kind of think could be a point guard, but he's playing the shooting guard position because he's playing right next to Dame. And we already know Dame is top three at his position in the league. So obviously, Anthony Simons is going to play the second to that guy. Now, this is Anthony Simons' first full year being the true starter next to Dame. And I'm going to be honest, he didn't really disappoint. Now, of course, he did have a bit of a down year shooting in the three at 37%, but regularly he's usually a 40% shooter and that's been shown in the two years prior. He is one of the better shooters in the league. Anthony Simons hasn't really had much of the opportunity, but this year he's averaging 21 points on 44% shooting from the field and he has a promising foundation to believe in and build off of. Now, personally, I'm pretty high on Anthony, and truthfully, I don't think he's gonna reach his true potential until Dame is gone, and he truly has the ball primarily in his hands, and he's the main guy. Now, I don't think he's ready to be the number one quite yet. That's not what I'm saying, but I do think he can reach another level if he has the opportunity to really be the guy. But for now, I have him at number 10, and even though I do expect him to progress and get better, at number nine, we got Desmond Bay. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I'm a perennial Desmond Bay hater and I really took a while to get on the train and thinking he was just a good basketball player at all but you know I finally got to that point so he's here and Desmond Bain played about 20 less games than last season but he still rose his points per game by three points to 21 and a half points per game I don't see Desmond Bain rising too too much coming into next year or ending out next year and that's strictly because I feel like a lot more players are tend to play more out of position strictly because the shooting guard position is not that deep in the NBA right now I don't want to say it's a lost art but it seems to be coming that now with Desmond Bain he's shown to rise in the playoffs and he he continues to be a solid running mate next to job but i honestly think nine is his ceiling i don't see how he's gonna get much better than being the three and d guy that he is now he's perfect for the grizzlies team and what he does and i will add that in a couple games against the lakers he did play very well to the point where there were some stretches where it looked like he was unstoppable so it's not to say desmond bain isn't a good player and it's not to say he doesn't have potential but like i said the shooting guard position is dominated by a lot of out of position players and speaking of that we have Mikel Bridges at number eight now I'm gonna be honest I'm only considering him a two because he was a two for the Nets while Cam Johnson was really the three and honestly above anything else He's listed as a two. Now, as much as I would love to put him higher, because I do love him as a player, I love two-way guys, and I love just buckets in general, we're just now seeing what he can do at the two, and though he was a huge contributor for the Suns while Buck and CP were hurt, which I think enabled him to have this offensive explosion that he had when he got to Brooklyn, I still would like to see him and his offensive progression throughout a whole season. Now, with that being said, I love Mikel Bridges' game. He seems to have been able to progress and get to a point where he can actually be a very good leader on a team. And if he continues to play at the level he has since becoming the number one guy for the Nets, and I think by the end of the year, he has a very strong chance to rise above at least number seven, which is Zach Levine. Zach Levine is a solid 20 to 25 points per game player, and you know exactly what you're going to get Get out of him. Though his offensive game has grown to be a lot more well-rounded, Zach Levine is still a player that doesn't quite get past that third tier of star, and I don't really ever see him doing so. Simply put, Zach Levine is a good player, not great, and he won't be the number one guy on the championship team in my opinion. Now, that doesn't mean he's bad, but he's always going to be the second or third option, and that's okay, but that's part of the reason he'll probably never rise above where he's at now. At number six, I have Paul George. Now, obviously, I've been saying it throughout this whole video, the shooting guard position is dominated 
distributed and ran by some players that are out of position. And that's not their fault. It's just according to fit for their team. As we all know, Paul George is a dog and one of if not the most talented players in the league but in the last four years he hasn't really been able to play at least 60 games and it's forcing him down the ladder unfortunately like i said pg is a dog regardless so six is probably the lowest he'll fall but as a person who values playoff basketball i'm starting to sour on pg because year in and year out we get to april and he has the same health issues that we keep seeing over and over now hopefully he and Kawhi can figure the injury woes out next year and with the West wide open aside from Denver, the Clippers could make a run if they can find a way to get a true point guard or bring back Russell Westbrook. We move to number five, and number five is Jalen Brown, who has actually risen very considerably since last season. I believe I had him in the bottom 10, but with Jalen Brown, he had a career season this year, and it would be absolutely criminal to have him anything below top five like i said before a career year for a guy that i honestly had comfortably in the bottom 10 due to some inconsistency issues and questionable shot taking but jalen brown this year he's shown real growth and development to where i can comfortably say he is a star i understand jalen brown kind of had a rough eastern conference finals people making fun of him for not being able to dribble with his left hand but that does not take away from the fact that jalen brown essentially led this team to that point anyway so I don't want to discredit what he did early in the playoffs because he had one bad series Jason Tatum was stinking it up in the first and second round and Jalen Brown was there to help and lead this team to the Eastern Conference Finals and I can't take that away from him while he had an amazing regular season some can argue and do argue that it was better than Jason Tatum's and that he might be better than Jason Tatum. I'm not going to go there, but I'm just saying I've seen it on Twitter. Now, realistically, I think he should not only get his own, but I think it'll also prove to be more beneficial to Jalen Brown if he's the number one on another team. He really needs to work on that weak-ass left hand, don't get me wrong, but that's an easy fix to get in the lab this season, so he's not going to fall on this list, in my opinion. Now, I know his hand was hurt, and I really don't care, but that handle wasn't an injury issue in my opinion now regardless I don't see Jalen Brown passing the last four who begin with Anthony Edwards you already know I'm extremely high on Anthony Edwards and he's someone that I think he's gonna be one of the next great two-way guards in the NBA he had a career year this year averaging 25 6 and 4 on 46 37 and 75 shooting splits all while Cat was out majority of the year with a calf injury. One thing about Anthony Edwards that I loved about this year, I feel like it forced him to mature at a rapid pace between some slip-ups and press conferences where he was saying no homo, his bad eating habits, and just overall figuring out what it means to be a pro. This year, we saw Ant take a huge step towards that, and at just 21 years of age, he's going to launch into superstardom and become the best shooting guard by the end of the year. I don't know if you guys see it, but I made an Anthony Edwards video. I'm going to drop it in the description so that you can watch it after this video. But I already think Anthony Edwards, he's well on his way to be the next best shooting guard on this list. And I think he's going to approach the top three closing out the season. But for right now, at number three, I have SGA. Another guy who is playing out of position because Josh Giddy. He's so much more of a pass-first kind of player. It doesn't seem right making SGA a one instead of him. SGA is another player that I'm super high on and one of my favorite players in this league. He's a lanky 6'6 guy that gets to the basket with ease and he shoots a respectable 34% from three. The Thunder finally looked to play meaningful basketball this coming season, which would be the first time in SGA's career for any team he's played for, really. Now, he did make it to the playoffs with the Clippers, but they weren't really expected to do anything in his rookie year though that is the first time he really showed flashes so in 2023 i think this will be the year where sga truly 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 becomes a household name and he ends up launching into tier two of superstars because right now i think he might be in tier three but he's very very close if not in tier two right now but he's definitely gonna solidify it by the end of this year. Now, despite the rest of the list being riddled with a lot of guys that are playing out of position, the last two dudes are true shooting guards. And I think this might be something that can be debatable. But personally, at number two, I have Donovan 
Mitchell. A lot like Desmond Bain, I was a huge Donovan Mitchell hater for as long as I could remember, especially when he played for the Jazz. And it really just came from his lack of defense because I'm a big defensive enjoyer. But quickly, I realized when you are your team's whole offense, both in Utah and Cleveland, you realize there's not really much energy for the defensive end. Dropping 71 earlier this year, it's clear that Donovan Mitchell is one of the best scorers in the league. And naturally, that would put him as a top player at his position. It's hard to believe, but he's coming off of a career year averaging 28, 4, and 4. He was practically the only player with his head on straight in the playoffs for Cleveland. And honestly, that's nothing new for Donovan Mitchell, who at this point almost averaged 40 in the playoffs at one time. Donovan Mitchell is a dog, and we obviously know this, but I'm intrigued to see him play on a team who has a real shot to win a chip. And unfortunately for Donovan Mitchell, I think Devin Booker is just too good to be surpassed at number one. The truest shooting guard on this list. I don't think there's really any debate regarding that. Now, there might be debate as to if he's number one, but... I'll let you guys decide that in the comments below. For Book, I think this is probably the most clear and easy number one in my humble opinion. Devin Booker is a bucket, but not only that, he's found a way to become a lot more serviceable on the defensive end, and it's made me an even bigger Book fan. Many don't like the way he shit talks, and trust me, I get it. But personally, the only time I really have an issue with it is when he's talking shit towards his daddy, Luka Doncic. But in all seriousness, Book, he'll probably be the best shooting guard until Anthony Edwards hits his prime. Some people, it might be Donovan Mitchell right now. But for now, I think he's clear of the rest of the pack. He averaged almost 30 in this regular season. And then when it came to the postseason, he teed up and averaged 33 points in 11 games played while shooting 60% from the field and 50% from three which is absolutely insane. Now, unfortunately, this man choked when it came to an elimination game. And not to mention that, the Suns also sold their soul for KD, so they didn't have nearly enough manpower on the defensive end to stop the Nuggets. Had the Suns made a run to the chip, I think we would probably be talking as Book as one of the greatest playoff runs ever if he could have sustained what he did in the 11 games that he did play. This was Devin Booker's third time in the postseason, and I will say... He seems to be comfortable when the lights are bright. Now, I can't say when the lights are brightest because when they're brightest, that's when your back is against the wall, you're facing elimination, and you're on the brink of being out. And I'm going to be honest, as much as I love Devin Booker, he does stink when it comes to elimination games. And that's just the cold, hard truth. I ain't going to lie to you. But that's all I got for you guys in this video. As always, like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below. Drop your top 10 shooting guards below. And it is your boy TB. As always, greatest hoop, stories, debates, all that stuff. I'm a two, and I'm out. Peace.